हेलो फ्रेंड्स वेलकम बैक वेलकम वेलकम एंड वेलकम यस सो वी आर इन आर नंबर सिस्टम मॉड्यूल या इन द लास्ट वीडियो इन द लास्ट सेशन वी सॉ ऑल अबाउट दोज थ्री थिंग्स द क्लासिफिकेशन कन्वर्जन ऑफ रेकरिंग टू फ्रैक्शन यस एंड देन इवन नॉट ऑपरेशन ऑल दोज थिंग्स इन टूडेज वीडियो द मेन एजेंडा इज अबाउट डिविजिबिलिटी You you have seen that you want to split some numbers into some given numbers, which we call it as factorization. You need to check quickly whether a given number is divisible by something else or not. So to to be able to do these things faster, we have to know the sum divisibility and divisibility rules, the shortcuts. Okay. So without wasting time, let's get started. Okay. So when can we say, yeah? But so we'll understand multiple of factor in greater detail. So when can we say that A is a multiple of B? Get very very familiar and comfortable with this word multiple. The easier word for this is what? Yes, the tables. When A comes in the multiplication table of B, then we say A is a multiple of B. For example, six is a multiple of two. Why? Because six in the comes in the table of two. Two threes are six. Yeah, so we can write it like this: a is b into n, n is some natural number. All right. Now, when can we say that c is a factor of d? Get get very comfortable, get very very clear, be very very clear with this word factor because many people don't understand multiple and factor so well, and this is the simplest reason because of which they don't understand HCF, LCM, all those things. Okay, great. So when can we say that c is a factor of d? Yes, when d comes in the multiplication table of c, yeah, two is a factor of six because six comes in the table of two. So logically, you can write like this: c is d divided by two divided by n, and n is of course a natural number. If you see these two thoughts, friends, you'll see that the factor and multiple are like inverse concepts. Yeah, so two is a factor of six, and at the same time, I can say six is a multiple of two. Okay, I hope the multiple and factor word is very very clear. Another word for mul uh, multiple is tables. Okay, we can also apply this logic to fractions as well. For example, one by twelve into three is one by four, isn't it? Three is a natural number. That main thing got satisfied. So one by four is a multiple of one by twelve, friends. We can say that. Okay, I hope you understood these two words, multiple and factor. Great. Let's go ahead. Also, let's understand more of about those. You know, when I said divisibility, I'm sure those four words must have clicked. Which four words I'm talking about? For example, nineteen divided by five. So how do we do it? Five three is a fifteen. Four. So we call nineteen as dividend, five as divisor, three as quotient, and of course your favorite four is remainder. There is no problem. So how will we relate all these four terms? So nineteen is nothing but five times three plus four. So we can write this formula as dividend is nothing but divisor times quotient plus remainder. Remember this relation about these four words, okay, friends? Now, if I give you a statement like this, a number when divided by twelve leaves a remainder of seven. In this statement, can you spot those four keywords? Yes. So, or can you call this number as out of those four words? Of course, dividend, right? Divided by twelve. So, twelve is divisor. Awesome, and remainder of seven clearly given. Seven is the remainder. Okay, quotient is not given that we can assume. So, we can write this given number as twelve times some quotient plus seven. This is how you should develop that number based on the statement. You should be comfortable with this, friends. Okay, so number is seven ahead of any number in the table of twelve. That way, cool. Okay. So finally, let's talk about divisibility tests. Yeah. So we have various tests available with us. Let's check them individually. So divisibility test of two is what. Yes, last digit must be divisible by two. That is, it should be either zero 
or any even digit. Test for four. Yes, number formed by last two digits should be divisible by four. Test for eight. Same pattern continues. Eight is third power of two, na two cubes. So number formed by last three digits must be divisible by eight, or it can be three zeros also. In case of four, also it can be last two ending with two zeros also. That is also fine. Test for three. Yes, some of the digits should be divisible by three. Test for nine. Some of the digits should be divisible by nine. Correct. But see, we know all this very well. But have you ever thought about the logic behind it? Why are these rules made? How come on what basis? Let's check the logic. Let's consider a number. Yeah. Can we write this number like this? Of course. The whole purpose of writing this is what? So this part is divisible by ten. Is it? It is ending in zero. Means this is five, six, seven, three, zero into ten. Into ten means what, friends? Into two into five. So this number is there in the multiplication table of two as well as five. So it is divisible by two also. It is divisible by five also. So only the last digit will decide whether it is divisible by two or not. Divisible by five or not. So five cut test is also same as two cut test. Yes. Okay. Great, but ten is not divisible by four. So for four, we think like this: hundred is divisible by four, right? So we'll write this number as five six seven hundred in plus thirty two. This is five sixty seven into hundred into hundred means into four into twenty five. So this is there in the table of four as well as twenty five. So this is divisible by four as well as twenty five. So we check only this, isn't it? Great. Okay. So powers of two. This is the logic, right? Okay, now ten is not divisible. Ten is divisible only by two, but not by three, right? But it is also by five. Just now we saw. So we can use a similar logic to check for powers of five. So test of five means last digit must be divisible by five. Mainly it should be zero or five, right? And if the last two digit number is divisible by twenty-five, yes, it is divisible by twenty-five. Yeah, great. But ten is not divisible by three. That is why we could not make some test of three based on this pattern. So we think like this. Come on, we can write this number like this. Isn't it in full detailed split up form? Fifty thousand plus six thousand plus seven hundred plus thirty plus two. Now see, I can write fifty thousand as five into nine thousand nine ninety nine plus one more time five. Same way others six into double triple nine plus six. I'm trying to create something which is very sure with respect to three or nine. So can you see this part? Mainly it here is divisible by nine, right? Nine can be taken common, and if it is divisible by nine, so of course it will be divisible by three, isn't it? So what is the deciding factor? This, which is nothing but sum of the digits. That is why we have made the rule for three as sum of the digits should be divisible by three, and same logic goes for nine. Correct. I hope you are understanding these beautiful logics. Till now, you just remembered the tests without knowing the background behind it. This is really awesome, friends. I am sure you will appreciate this. Yeah. Okay. But uh, what about eleven then? Let's do something like this again. Some smart adjustment. This is the first thought. Now check. I am trying to create multiples of eleven. Check this, friends. This was divisible by eleven, so that is fine. But triple nine was not divisible by eleven, so we went ahead. Six into one thousand one minus six. Same way see here. So this much part, huh? Till here is divisible by eleven. So the deciding part is this. And what do you see in this? Is yes, two plus seven plus five. This minus six plus three, isn't it? So starting with units, take the ordering digits: two plus seven plus five minus the remaining sum, three plus six. This result should either be zero or any number which is divisible by eleven. That's the logic. So sum of odd placed digits and sum of even placed digits. Or place digits means first place, third place, fifth place, and so on. 
even placed digits means second place fourth place and so on so difference between these two should be zero or a multiple of 11 okay then the given number is divisible by 11 all right now what about 10 simple very simple number should end in zero yeah these are like the must know tests okay and there are some more yeah. i will work for any prime number for example see these are not mandatory yeah. you can forget it it's fine in this case i would prefer dividing the given number by these numbers directly direct divide, division karke dekh lenge ka but just for extra knowledge i am sharing this with you so this tens and units so tens is one and units is five what does this mean let's check So well, this is a number I want to test whether it is divisible by seven or not. So first, split the units, please. That into five. So this five was mainly you multiply units, please, by five and add that number to the remaining part. So five six seven three plus ten five six eight three. Still, it is big enough. I am not very clear. Again, do the same process. So I got five eighty three one more time to make it more comfortable. Fifty-eight plus fifteen, seventy-three. Now you should be in a position to say seventy-three is not divisible by seven. So this is the procedure, friends. So this basically five, six, seven, three to that bigger number is not divisible by seven for sure. Okay. This five is called a seed number. Okay. Now for thirteen. This time that seed number is four instead of five. So this in this we'll split this two into four, add it to this. So we'll get five six eight one again. Split the units place into four, add it to the remaining part. Again two into four, add it to the remaining part. Sixty five. Now sixty five is divisible by thirteen. That bigger number is also divisible by thirteen. Yeah, this way. Okay. So we can find a similar number sometimes called the seed number for each prime. For example, to find how how do we find C number? Let's see. Suppose for seven I want so find the first multiple ending with nine. So in case of seven, the first multiple ending with nine is what? Forty nine, isn't it? Add one and then divide by ten. So in forty nine, if I add one, I'll get fifty. Divide by ten, five. So did you see that C number is five? Yeah. For seventeen. If you do the same logic, first multiple ending in nine, seventeen sevens are one one nine. Add one, one twenty divided by ten, so twelve. Same way, I'm sure you will find the seed numbers for the remaining three. Okay, all right. Extra knowledge, not compulsory. What about composite numbers? For example, how should we check if a number is divisible by six or not? Yes. It should be divisible by both two and three. In such cases, we'll split the given number into two composite numbers. Sorry, two co-prime numbers. Two and three are co-prime. Okay. For twenty-four, now we have we have various possibilities. Should I check for twelve and two, or eight and three, or six and four? Now see, to create a twenty-four, I need exactly three twos and a three. Correct. Separately divisible by eight and three, so this will be finally selected. Not this and not this. So ultimately, what is the conclusion? Split into relatively prime numbers or co-prime numbers. Remember, we had done this in the last video. Yes. So what will you do for thirty-six? Co-prime pairs, four and nine, and luckily we know the test for them. One one seven, for example. Yes, nine and thirteen. Thirty-nine is the one word. One one seven. And we know the rest for them. Yeah, sixty. You can split this into three, four, and five, and we know the rest for all three. Hundred, for example, four and twenty-five, like that, friends. Okay. So for bigger numbers, you can split that bigger number into co-prime numbers. All right. Yeah. Great. now friends apart from all these there is something more if you remember them well and good even if you don't it's okay you can derive on the spot but prior knowledge is good enough so if i take any two digit number let's say ab
yeah a b and reverse the digit interchange the digits so it becomes b a right and if i add them so there is something unique i can say about that so i can generalize this like this so ab can be written as 10 into a plus b isn't it and ba can be written as 10 into b plus a so if we add them 10a plus a and b plus 10b is so 11a plus 11b from which i can take 11 common so the result is 11 times a plus b so we looking at this you should understand that i can say that the result is always divisible by 11 and sum of the digits So sum of such two-digit numbers will always be divisible by eleven and a plus b. You can check for any two-digit number. Yeah. Similarly, if I subtract them, so ten a plus b minus ten b plus a, so result will be nine a minus nine b. So nine common. So difference will always be divisible by nine and a minus b. Okay. This you should know. This will help you save some time. Now, whenever you see such four-digit number. A B A B format means take a two-digit number A B, write the same number ahead of it. So A B A B, it becomes a four-digit number. It can always be factorized as A B into one zero one. For example, thirty-four thirty-four. So I can write that as three thousand four hundred plus thirty-four. Simple. So this thirty-four into hundred plus thirty-four. Then we can take thirty-four common hundred plus one, so one zero one. So that is why I wrote that as A B into one zero one. So you should be able to factorize it very fast. Okay. Similarly, we have a six-digit number in which first three-digit number is same as the next three-digit number. Means I took a three-digit number, I wrote that again after it. So A B C A B C. Now this can be written as A B C into one thousand one. Example: seven eight six seven eight six. I can write this as. Acha, yeah. and that one thousand one can again be factorized as seven into eleven into thirteen. Okay. So seven eighty six thousand plus seven eighty six. Simple seven digit is common thousand plus one. That is how we got one thousand one, and one thousand one can again be factorized as the product of three consecutive prime numbers seven, eleven, and thirteen. So whenever you see such six digit numbers, these thoughts should be clicking for sure. Yeah. Any number of the four type type A A B B will always be divisible by eleven, right? Because A plus B and A plus B sum of odd placed and even placed, the difference between them will always be zero. And then triple one is thirty-seven into three. This much you should know because sometimes if you see three same digits, triple A, so A into triple one and triple one is three into thirty-seven. So such kind of numbers wherein three digits are same, it always be divisible by thirty-seven and of course by three. That should click. So these are some extra knowledge. If you remember, time will be saved. Otherwise, say it's okay. Okay. All right. so with respect to divisibility this is a bare minimum concept which you should know so thank you so much for devoting your time to listen to this video and i hope you have made the notes properly yes take care stay safe see you in class bye bye